artists. Um, as I mentioned, uh, first I would like to ask you about uh, the situation from the beginning of the year. Um, the helicopter production at Kobe Bryant, uh, that uh, the GTA Day friends. Uh, could you tell us, um, maybe, I don't want to focus on the situation, but uh, how do you remember Kobe as a player, as a person, and a person? Kobe was a special person from the fact when we first met him, for the Lakers going after him. Jerry West obviously saw something in him that uh, was more special than anybody else. Mm -hmm. And I had the opportunity, unfortunate or fortunate, the opportunity to uh, go against Kobe. You know, I was on the coaching staff, so I had to work him out. Mm -hmm. And uh, it was an interesting workout for the fact is that he was very, very uh mobile for a young kid to be able to do the things that he was able to do at an early age that's when people knew especially jerry that this kid was going to be something special yes of course and jerry uh, jerry west is well known for his instinct to to see something special in the players and that, that's why i guess he decided to trade it blood the divas for kobe bryant in the draft day for sure and uh you know, at the time, because the Lakers were in transition after Magic moving on, and the Lakers are about winning championships. Mm -hmm. And the important thing about that is that the Lakers build for great players, and Kobe was definitely a great player. And it was actually fun and interesting to see his uh, growth through the mm -hmm. Lakers. Uh, at that time, that team was pretty good, but they were missing that marquee star player, and Kobe gave them that. And uh, they had Nick Van Exel, Eldon Campbell, Eddie Jones, but they needed another key, key player. And when Kobe came in there, it was difficult at first, but Jerry doesn't look for instantaneous success. He looks for that long-term success. Did Kobe, did Kobe many times ask you for advice about uh, how to be a better defender? No, no. Kobe was Kobe. I think he <laughs> asked certain people, but you know what? Hard work, and I always say this to young people, Hard work pays off. And when you put in the work, good things will happen for you. And Kobe had one of the, the best, the best work ethics of any player I've ever seen. Mm -hmm. um, uh, now we've got the situation that the season is frozen and we are waiting for some good news. And probably uh, that this season will be continued in, in the short time, July, August, we will see. And what do you think about the current Los Angeles with LeBron James and Antonio Davis as the leaders. What are the chances for the NBA championship from your perspective? I think the Lakers have all the tools. I think the role players, before this COVID-19 hit, all the role players were playing their role and doing an extremely good job. I think with LeBron James and Anthony Davis, you have two players that are definitely can take a team to the next level. But as we all know, it's about team. It's not about individuals. And uh, the Lakers had all of that going for them. And it's so unfortunate. Uh, but again, we're worried about the people's health, that everybody's healthy. But it's so unfortunate that this happened, the time that it did, because I think the Lakers had the opportunity to win another championship. Mm -hmm. And uh, I would like now to focus on your career and also the background so of uh, your journey with the basketball. Um, when you were a kid, you've got uh, some bad accident uh, that uh, you cut your knee and got 100 st stitches to close it. And doctor said that you would never walk again. And but a miracle happened. And uh, how do you remember this experience and how it uh, create you as a person and also a player in the future? You know, I think players go through different things through their lifetime. That happened to be mine, and it was an accident that happened. We had uh, some, my grandmother had some dogs. We had just got some dogs, and back in the day, we used to put uh, the Folgers uh, coffee grind. Mm -hmm. We would put the bacon grease, the grease that you had back then, you would put that in a can, and we used to put it on the back porch. So the dogs had knocked that over, and I came out, slipped on that, and mm -hmm. uh, cut it 102 stitches on my left knee. Mm -hmm. said i would never walk again and uh you know through the grace of god and the prayers of my my grandmother everything worked out extremely well uh, but it took like two and a half three years for that to 
uh, to get over that because I was so young at five years old, four years old when that happened. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I, I'm a parent of two really energetic daughters. So when I uh, read your story, uh, and at all the times I'm afraid about what could happen to my daughters, but uh, I try to imagine your parents uh, who were in this situation. Uh... I think it was just a matter of me being a young person. Uh -huh. There were many things that happened. I grew up with my grandmother, so we had 10, 12 kids always around. Uh -huh. And it was just a matter of uh, everybody getting their injuries. You know, you fall, you slip <laughs> and fall, you this injury, that injury, and that happened to be mine. And it was one that I'm glad that I overcame, but I think it made me the person that I became today. Mm -hmm. And when you were a kid, uh, who was your favorite basketball player? My favorite basketball player, my uncle, his name was Tom. In our family, he liked team basketball. So it was all about team play. So I grew up being a Celtic fan. And the uh -huh. Celtics were the team to watch because of the things that they were able to accomplish as a team. And that's who he showed me, Sam Jones, uh, uh, Casey Jones, uh, John Havlicek, Bob Cousy, Bill Russell. So that's who we all became part of. Uh -huh. And that's what, that's what I watched. But as I got older and I started understanding basketball, my uh -huh. favorite player, and unfortunately, was John Havlicek. Uh, okay. Great player, six man, but he was did a little bit of everything. Uh -huh. Rebound, play defense, a good assist, score, do, did all the things necessary to make his team win. So I kind of identified more with him. Uh -huh. So you grew up in the, uh, in the California, right? I'm, from, I'm, I'm a true okay. California person. <laughs> Okay, so so, for, so being um, focused on the Celtics, I get it. I guess that it was quite quite uh, weird for for your neighbors and your or your friends. Um, not really, because everybody was Laker fans except my uncle. And <laughs> when I actually got with the Lakers, it was funny because now he had to pick one or two, uh, either us or the Lakers. So it was hard. But those are the games that he never watched. But basketball was just. Uh, a, into the means, you know, the beginning of things, because we weren't very rich. So basketball for me was to get a degree and uh, to be able to go to school and get an education. Mm -hmm. So um, when I talk with uh, many former NBA players, uh, they, they told me, and I was surprised that uh, basketball wasn't their uh, first love sport. And so that many times they want to be um, a football player, but mm -hmm. suddenly uh, became taller, and that's why they decided to choose basketball. And what was your story? My story was to get an education through basketball, and I played it for that reason. I didn't start thinking about the pros until I was a senior in college, uh, probably about 10 games into the season, because I was going to just get an education and then do what I had to do after that, uh, wherever it led me. So for basketball, for me, it was very interesting and fun because I always played this game for the love of the game. I never played it to uh, make money or anything like that. Mm -hmm. So uh, you choose basketball, uh, which helped you to um, to graduate to the university. And did you expect that someday you will be uh, drafted by NBA team? No, no, never thought that. But if that came about, because for younger players back in the 70s, it was not about... Uh, we didn't have the G League and overseas. Those are things that we didn't think about. So we were always concerned with just getting a good education and then going on and do what we did. If you got shows or maybe that was something that happened in the NBA, then that became a reality, but not for us at that time. Mm -hmm. And you were selected by Los Angeles Lakers in the third round with uh, 60 pick. And uh, it was really difficult first rookie year because uh, you played only in three games. And uh, I guess it wasn't easy for you. Am I right? It wasn't easy at all. When I got drafted, the Lakers had a full veteran team because they were uh, concerned about winning a championship. So they had Lou Hudson, Ron Boone, Kenny Carr, they had players like that. So I had to break in. It was very fortunate that I did get injured because I don't think I would have been able to make the team at that time. So that was good for me to have that injury because what I had to do then was just sit to the side. Jerry West was our coach at that time. So that mm -hmm. tells you how far back I go. Uh, mm -hmm. He was a coach. So what, uh, at that particular time, all I did was just get healthy, come to practice, do a little bit of understanding what the game was about. And that really helped me. 
Mm -hmm. And next season was uh, totally different because uh, it was different for the team and also for you. You played in 82 games. Uh, Lakers won um, a championship. And what uh, were the main factors? Uh, Magic Johnson um, uh, effect, um, new coach who find the chemistry of the team or maybe other factors? I think it all kind of came together because I think obviously with the, the draft pick of Magic Johnson, that really helped because the Lakers were looking to go in a, uh, a transition type of play because they had been such a half court team. So for us, uh, with Coach McKinney, Jack McKinney was the coach that started that in the 80s. It was about doing what the Portland Trailblazers had done to the championship back then. So uh, he put together a team. He needed defensive people. So I happened to be that type of player. And that's what uh, a tribute to me of making the team. Mm -hmm. And I must say that I love defense and even more than scoring. And uh, of course, there are players who got uh, better offensive uh, skills. And uh, for me, uh, it's better to focus on making uh, life difficult for my opponents. And when I look at the videos uh, from the Showtime era, and I look for, for you as a player and uh, how you move on, on the court, it's really inspiring for me. And could you tell us more about your uh, defensive skills and how did you master this aspect of the game? Well, for me, basketball, uh, going to the University of New Mexico, the only way I knew I could make the team was to be able to be a good defensive player. So when I got with the Lakers, they had Kareem, Jamal Wilson on this, and they had enough, excuse me, enough people to play on the offensive end. So they needed somebody on the defensive end. So that's why I, I became a big part. Mm -hmm. And uh, who did you guard during Lakers uh, sessions? Was it uh, or all the time rotation, or you need to focus on the sp specific player? No, my, t my time was always spent on defense, playing good in that aspect and, and guarding the, off the other team's best offensive player. So that's where I kind of like earned my right and my ability to play with the Lakers and stay on that team because they had enough score. So that's where I kind of like made my niche and stayed with that. But as I got better and understood the game, then I had to become more of an offensive threat. Mm -hmm. When you are talking at the best offensive players, uh, Larry Bird told that you were the best defender. And could you say the same, that Larry Bird was the toughest player to guard? The toughest player I've ever had to guard. And again, you have to understand at that time, there was uh, Michael Jordan, there was uh, George Gervin, mm -hmm. a lot of great offensive scorers at that time. So I was very fortunate to be able to play against those players, but Larry, I had to be smart about because of the other players, Dominique Wilkins, you played against those players from an athletic standpoint. Larry was more of the point of where you had to defend him every aspect of the game. And that's what I loved about him. Mm -hmm. You were eight times in all defensive teams, uh, five times in the first team and three times the second. And in 1987, you won the Defensive Player of the Year award. When you looked in the past, uh, which season from defensive point of view was the best for you? Um, the NBA is known for offense. So for me, the aspect of playing defense was just to help the team. But as you got better as an offensive player, that's when you get recognized more as a, of your all around ability for rebounding or who, whatever the situation may be. So mine was offense, I mean defense. So when I started scoring more is when they started recognizing me as a defensive player. Mm -hmm. uh, when we are talking about the best issues, uh, which NBA title tasted, uh, tasted the best for you? The best offensive player? Uh, the best title, NBA title, the one with... Oh, 85 was probably was the, the best. best for me. Yes. I like that because it was the first time we were able to defeat the Boston Celtics. And being a Laker fan, Boston was always the team that we had to beat and that watching them over the years always beat the Lakers. So. For 85, it was kind of like uh, uh, passing the ghost and uh, uh, getting rid of all the ghosts of the NBA with Jerry West and Elgin. Lakers could never beat that team, so that was the fun part for me, 85. But 88 was special, too, because that was the first time a team had ever, after 16 years, the Celtics would go back to back, and we were the first team to do that in 16 years. Mm -hmm. And what makes uh, Lakers... Uh... As, as much successful team uh, that you could win two 
uh, two titles in a row because as you said it's, it's really difficult uh, because from the Lakers uh, Celtics time it was uh, there wasn't a team uh, who, who won the two consecutive uh, titles what helped you to uh, to achieve this um I think teamwork Pat Riley was all about team and that was the most important thing to him so as he incorporated that with us that's how we became teams win championships not individual and once we learned that and we had a very good team. The jury was always replenishing that team with different players. That's when we became the real true basketball team as far as the Lakers. Mm -hmm. When we are talking about teams, um, when you could uh, create the all defensive team uh, from 80s, uh, mm -hmm. who would be selected? I guess, of course, Michael Cooper, and we've got uh, four more uh, places in the team. Mm -hmm. I'd go myself, Magic. Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, mm -hmm. um, I like James Worthy, but we had so many players. I think Byron Scott at one point in time, but for sure, Jamal Wilkes. Uh, we had Bob McAdoo, you just had a plethora of players. Kurt Rambis would have to go in that aspect but because of his ability to do the little things that help teams win championships. So it was the best uh, Lakers as you, as, you could, uh, as you could choose. And when we are talking about, uh, because 80s were really good when we are talking about defense, uh, if you could create the all defensive team from the, each player who played in the 80s, uh, who would be there? Um, that's a good question. James Worthy, mm -hmm. on the Lakers team you're talking about, right? Mm -hmm. James Worthy, Kareem, I think uh, Norm Nixon, that was a mm -hmm. very, we had a very good team in 82 with him, Jamal Wilkes. Mm -hmm. Okay. And obviously Magic. So we've got the best defensive uh, players in Lakers in 80s. And if you could uh, choose the each player, um, every player from the whole NBA league, who would be the, the NBA? Uh, your all, all defense uh, NBA of team. All teams? All of teams, all teams. yes. I think you'd have to go with. Uh, I like myself, obviously. I think Dennis Johnson was very good. Mm -hmm. I think uh, and Dennis and I could play different in multiple positions. I think Alvin Robertson was good for the Milwaukee Bucks. Uh, defensively, Elijah Wong, I think I would give it to him simply because of his ability at the center position. And uh, hmm. Robertson. You know what? I have to say Michael Jordan. I think Michael uh -huh. Jordan is a very good defensive player. Mm -hmm. That's your five. Okay, we've got five. Uh, you spent 12 seasons um, in Lakers. Um, it, it was your only team. You uh, became the legend of, of the team. And after your journey in, uh, in NBA, you, you went to, to Italy uh, to, and you played in uh, Palacanestro Virtus Roma. And uh, per che Italia? Uh, no, a little bit, but I don't, <laughs> I've been over there in a while. <laughs> but I knew this, uh, Doma de Paula. I knew that. That was the one that... Uh, what? No. That was the one that... Uh, it was like, give me the ball. So I understood uh -huh. that one. Okay. And uh, how do you remember this, this time spent here in Italy? Was it a good uh, leak at this moment? It was very good. I had a great time over there. I think the team was very good. I think uh, 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 I was built, the team was kind of like built around me. So I had an opportunity to do a lot of things and make players better. So that was the fun part for me. Mm -hmm. And uh, you were really successful as a player, but uh, as well as a coach, uh, uh, because uh, in uh, 2001 and 2002, uh, you were a coach uh, of uh, Los Angeles Sparks and uh, you won the WNBA championship. And also in 2003, you were in, uh, in the WNBA uh, finals. What was the secret of such uh, successful dynasty which you uh, created? You know what, I tried to coach the way that I was coached and that was important to me. Pat Riley was a very good coach. My college coach, Norm Ellenberger, was good. So I tried to coach that way. And when you let the players have a, a, a say-so of what's going on on the court because they know what's going on, 
that's when you have good success because everybody's working as a team out there together. So for me, that was the biggest and most important thing. Mm -hmm. When I checked your um, coaching career, um, there was success in the WNBA, also won um, D League with Alberki Thunderbirds, and also in Big Three with Three Company, you were in uh, in the finals. Uh, I just uh, wonder that um, do you expect that someday maybe some uh, NBA team ask you to be a coach for uh, for for them and uh, maybe this uh, successful uh, the success w which you've got as a coach uh, could be useful in the NBA as well. I think if that opportunity were to arise, I would entertain it. But right now, I enjoy the things that I accomplished. I get a chance now to spend some time with my son. I have a 14-year-old or 15-year-old, and I'm enjoying coaching him. And uh, I have an AAU program that I coach. I would do that, but I still, because of the time that I spent with my kids and so much play, I enjoy the time that I have here at home. Mm -hmm. And how do you like to be a coach? I love the uh, teaching part of it. I love the motivation part. And when you're doing that, that's when players are getting better. So my thing is for the players to uh, entertain the players and make them become better players and show them what it takes, not necessarily to get there as NBA players, but to get there as a person. And it's important that kids understand that there's more to life than basketball, because if you achieve that, that's fine. But basketball is only a short period of who you are. So that's why I like and enjoy teaching young players how to get better. Mm -hmm. It's really interesting because uh, the, the same told to the reporter when I asked him about being a coach in the University of Portland that basketball is one thing, but uh, you should show the, 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 the kids uh, how to be, to be a, a good person and uh, that you've got life also after basketball. So it's really interesting. And uh, Michael, thank you very much. That was uh, all questions which, which I've got to you. Maybe you've got some for me. None for you, but thank you. Mm -hmm. So thank you for the opportunity. I'm glad I could be informative to you. Okay. Thank you for the opportunity to tell something more about uh, your career and uh, the, the Lakers era for, for the Polish bas basketball uh, fans. And uh, I'm really grateful that uh, I've got the opportunity to talk with you. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Michael. Thank you very much and have a nice afternoon. Goodbye.